So hi, hello, welcome again, Mike Rope Hunter here and welcome to another Saturday, well, live stream it is not because this video here is pre-recorded and uh, I hope that you're still able uh, to enjoy it uh, and I think uh, if I'm correctly informed then you're also able to participate in the chat uh, on the side but it, as I said it's a pre-recorded live stream because unfortunately um, this uh, Saturday I am a little bit uh, busy and uh, therefore I decided to try out something new it's called YouTube Premiere which basically means that uh, yeah the video is pre-recorded but uh, it is played at a, a certain specific uh, time well, um, yeah, you can already see that there is a little uh, view here under the microscope, uh, and, uh, water crustacean ostracod next to an air bubble. But uh, for today, I decided uh, to do something slightly different. Um, I always uh, told myself I'm never ever going to use artificial intelligence when making uh, yeah, microscopy related YouTube videos. But I have to tell you something. Look, um, I'm breaking my own promise today because here I've got uh, 10 questions and these 10 questions are not not uh, from my viewers, but rather uh, they were written by chat GPT, an AI, <clears throat> an AI su uh, system. And I simply typed into the computer, please uh, for my YouTube video, generate me 10 questions which are microscopy related uh, basic questions and as a matter of fact they did a pretty good job and uh, here are 10 questions uh, and I would like uh, to answer them. Um, some of them are, yeah. Quite introductory others are a little bit more advanced already in any case I think it's a quite a fascinating thing here and the first one is, is I think also quite relevant already what are some essential tools and equipment for hobby microscopy <laughs> yeah the AI system came up with that question and I said wow that's actually quite good and for this re reason I decided to show you a couple of my my tools um, and uh, yeah some of the equipment that I'm using for preparing microscope slides yeah and I'm just going to go through this uh, box here as a matter of fact, this here is a plastic slide box, as you can see. Um, and the reason why I'm using it as a toolbox and not as a slide box is, is because there is a manufacturing problem with this uh, slide box. Yeah, it is actually too small <laughs> for slides. Yeah, it's uh, actually yeah, totally useless. So I'm not able to fit the slides in here because it's too narrow. And for this reason, I decided, well, I'm just going to use it as a toolbox. And yeah, that's why. Well, um, the most useful tool for hobby microscopy is, um, yeah, are the tweezers here. And I like those pointed tweezers and they're extremely versatile. You can transfer droplets of water, you can transfer for specimens and so on. Yeah, so I highly recommend those. Uh, unfortunately, you gotta be a little careful because if you injure yourself, it's of course the possibility of, for infection, especially if you picked up a uh, you know, dirty water sample. So do be careful. Um, there are other tweezers as well here. Yeah, um, by the way, I got this uh, set uh, of dissecting tools back at university yeah, almost 30 years ago um, and uh, they're still good. Yeah, so at that time I had to buy some dissecting tools uh, for dissecting of animals. Yeah, so there are those tweezers here. Then, oh yeah, here, uh, there are also straight ones over here. Yeah. Um, there are some uh, some scissors. I think they're quite useful as well, especially if you want to cut some algae or some um, you know, some other material. I'll be uh, showing this to you later as well. I've got some standard scissors here for maybe for cutting maybe some some you know, some plant stems you know, here as well. These scissors here are also used for dissection of, of I don't know yeah uh, certain animals maybe yeah you know, I think I've probably only used it once <laughs> for that purpose. And um, of course, a, a little brush uh, for dusting the microscope, very useful. And also, look what I've got here. Um, those are actually um, tweezers, which are commonly used also by people who collect um, stamps. But they can be used, and they are often used um, also to, yeah, yeah, to hold, uh, hold uh, yeah, cover glasses. Yeah. Um, and uh, there is another one over here, which looks a little bit different. So here it is, yeah. Same same concept, yeah. Um, yeah, you get you get the idea. Okay. So and last but not least, uh, there are a few more useful um, accessories. Uh, for example, like a small petri dishes uh, or block dishes for yeah for water. That's quite useful. Let me put it somewhere. Um, I like to use also disposable tweezers. So I bought a pack of hundred um, of them, and uh, I reuse them of course because if I only pick up waters, then you 
you know, it would be a waste if I just were to throw them away after a single use. And uh, another thing that's uh, quite useful um, are razor blades and a sweet deep printed now the, you know, the, 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 the handle here. Uh, for protection and uh, these razor blades are of course useful for making very thin cuts and if you do not have a 3D printer for making these things then I suggest that you cover one edge with, with some tape yeah, so that you don't hurt yourself. Yeah, um, yeah of course uh, yeah, there are also other slightly more advanced tools. I do not say that you have to have those but I consider them quite useful. Uh, these are so-called microliter pipettes. So this one goes from 5 to 50 microliters and I can adjust the volume by turning yeah, by turning uh, yeah, this, this thing here in the back. I also have other one, another one over there somewhere. Yes, here it is. This one is uh, um, a one milliliter um, yeah, pipette. Um, yeah, I don't have the tips now, um, but I think that the volume uh, is a little bit too much here. Yeah, I, I found it a little bit too much and I consider those uh, ones uh, also quite useful because you're actually, in the, if you're very careful, um, able to pick up individual microorganisms with this. Yeah? Of course you're also going to suck in a lot of water but it is possible and I have already picked out individual um, yeah, cells uh, uh, this way. Um, yeah, it does take still a lot of patience but it does work. Well maybe not individual cells but uh, I've actually um, uh, uh, pulled out uh, some face mites uh, from from a microscope slide. Yeah, so this is uh, quite uh, useful. And um, and uh, by pressing this button here in the back, what happens is is that you kind of uh, throwing off the tip, and then you can can use uh, again new tips. And I got a, a box here, yeah, where you can essentially yeah store your tips. But those tips are also sold in 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 quite uh, large amounts as well in ba plastic bags. So I, I I consider this quite nice. Uh, yeah, and useful, very convenient. looks looks nice as well. Yeah, so um, yeah, so these are some 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 of the tools that I'm using, um, and uh, of course I also have uh, over here. Uh, yeah, look at this here. Um, yeah, also for cleaning the microscope a little bit. Yeah, here. Yeah. Um, yeah, you, you get the idea. Of course, I also have microscope slides and cover glasses. Yeah, so but these are the essential tools, and uh, for for making um, slides, I think uh, this is uh, perfectly okay. Yeah. So yeah, so this was actually the the, the first one. Let, just let's have a look how let's have a look how my um, my sample is doing here. So let's uh, start uh, to have a look at the second question here. Can you share some tips for preparing microscope slides at home? And I have to tell you, well, that's a very huge and large question. It really depends a lot on which type of slides you want to make, permanent slides or temporary slides. So I think maybe maybe we're just going to make a, a permanent slide now. Um, and then maybe you can pick along some tips uh, yeah, as I show them uh, to you. Um, well, but one tip uh, that I do have is, is, is make sure that the mounting medium that you use is uh, more or less compatible uh, to the specimen. So, and what I've got here is, is I've got, of course, some microscope a microscope slide here. I do have a, a, a cover glass. Uh, I'm going to dry wipe it because um, I want it to be free of, of grease. Yeah. And uh, what I would like to do is, is uh, I would like to uh, make now a yeah permanent mount um, of some. Look what I've got here. These are catkins. Yeah. And I would like to yeah. It looks uh, quite a little bit uh, furry here, and uh, so I think maybe I'm just going to cut off uh, some of these uh, this uh, these here here and make a permanent mount. Um, and uh, in order to do that, um, I need uh, yeah to have my scissors, and these are the scissors that I just showed you a couple of minutes ago here. Uh, I'm gonna use the pointed ones, and um, I also have uh, prepared. I just don't know where I put the ball. Ah, here it is. Yeah, uh, some mounting medium, and uh, the mounting medium that I'll be using is a yeah a, a one that is water based, and it's called P Elmer's PVA glue, and it's actually not a, an official mounting medium, but it is as a glue, um, and uh, that's how it looks like. It's school glue. It's a clear glue non-poisonous, uh, completely water-based. And what I've done is, is I filled some of it over into this bottle here and added a little bit of water to dilute it down to make it a little bit thinner. And this is actually a, a surprisingly good mounting medium for general purpose. So I highly recommend it if you um, just want to experiment around a little bit with microscopy. Yeah, and if you want to make some, some slides, let's move everything else over here, some slides that, yeah, we would like, uh, that don't have any specific uh, advanced requirements, you just might as well use uh, this mounting medium here. Um, so I'm just going to place a drop on the microscope slide here. Okay. 
And uh, if it's too much, if it's too much, then um, of course I would recommend that you then remove uh, a little bit uh, later on after it's dried. So then over here the catkin and some scissors and uh, let's try to cut off some of those here here. Okay, and uh, let's hope that this falls directly into... Yeah, um, I don't know, I almost don't see anything here. And... So, yes, okay, here we go. Um, yeah, it's basically now floating on the surface. Um, so this is uh, not completely submerged in mounting medium. And for this reason, I suggest uh, that you maybe put another small drop on top. Yeah, and uh, well, maybe it does start to sink a little bit, but just let's make sure. Uh, and I don't know, I think it's a little bit excessive what I've got here, um, but that is okay. Uh, because after drying, I'm going to simply remove uh, the rest. Yeah. Of course, you can also adjust the size of the, um, yeah, the thickness a little bit by adjusting the size of the cover glass. But just for the fun of it, why not use? Uh, the mounting medium is very excessive. I have some problems opening the box here. Here we go. And just uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to use those tweezers. Where are they? And here they are. Okay. So let's, let's go for this, yeah. And I, I usually did, it's, I think it's not necessary uh, to use those, uh, but um, it depends a little bit on which mounting medium you use. This is water-based mounting medium, it's non-poisonous, but probably if you're using a mounting medium that contains organic solvents, you probably do not want to have them on your fingers and therefore I would suggest that you use those. And you can see that capillary action will do the rest. Um, and now, uh, now what? Well, um, you just let it dry for a couple of days um, and then you can always use a sharp knife to scratch off uh, the uh, excess glue that came out from the side if you want to do that. Huh? Um, generally, I think it's not a good idea to directly observe it under the microscope because there's the danger of the microscope objective becoming uh, yeah, covered with glue. Uh, but I'll be using the low power magnification now, so it's, it's going to be fine. So the distance is going to be uh, large enough. So let's uh, switch over again to the microscope view here. Uh, here it is still, the, the, the ostracod, <laughs> still happy uh, next to the air bubble. And uh, let's yeah, change it now a little bit here. Look, the brightness is a little bit too high. So let's take it out, the slide, and let's replace it with the slide with the catkins. Okay, and let's have a look. I'm going to, ah, uh, here we go, yeah. Let's go up a little bit with the magnification. Of course, we have to focus, uh, and here we go. So this is actually a, a good specimen also to practice focusing a little bit yeah, and, and, and things like that. Yeah. Um, also to test a little bit uh, whether the mounting medium works. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, a, that's a, the thing I just wanted to show you. It looks a little bit like modern art. And the blue background, of course, is because uh, of the contrasting technique that I have. Yeah, so I've got polarized light. Yeah, and, and so on. You can even change the colors around. Most microscopes uh, don't allow you to do that. Yeah. Or uh, in bright field, in case you want to know, this is, uh, yeah, the appearance in bright field. And these are actually the natural colors. Yeah. That, that you can see here. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, I don't know if you're able to see this, but there seems to be some kind of a little bit of disturbance in the video signal. I just saw there was some, some kind of flashing yeah, of the signal. I don't know if uh, this is also recorded or not. Yeah. So, but that basically is uh, the thing. So, um, yeah, what does ChatGPT ask me to do? Some, some, some what? Some, uh, some shared tips of preparing microscope slides at home. Yeah, a tip number one is, is, is allow the, um, mounting medium to dry before you actually observe it under the microscope. Otherwise, there is, of course, the danger that, uh, uh, it's going to be covered uh, with, uh, with mounting medium. Um, make sure that it's reasonably flat. Um, and uh, after it's dried, you can always remove it again. And I think the biggest recommendation is this trial and error. Yeah. So this is something that I simply want to recommend. I think there is not a, a, um, a single correct way of making microscope slides because it depends quite a bit on the type of mounting medium and specimen that you use. Um, yeah. But I think yeah, that's the general um, idea. Don't forget to label it because after a couple of days, you might have forgotten what it is. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to store it horizontally and I'm going to put it away. And then I'm going to sometime in the future, I'm going to put a label on here. So, but let's move on a little bit. Okay. What are the, some of the most fascinating microorganisms you've observed under the microscope? What are the most fascinating ones? 
well, I don't know if I have, uh, if, uh, if you consider some of the most fascinating or not. Let's put the thing here again. Let's have a look here again. Let's put it back. Um, I don't know if, uh, if, if I could say that there are some, the most fascinating ones. Um, yeah, but generally I would say that microorganisms that are fairly large, yeah, like uh, those ostracods that you see here, are quite fascinating because you can actually look into their bodies and uh, observe a little bit of what's also going on inside them. Huh? Um, so in that sense, I consider those fascinating. But I think the, the real interest is not necessarily uh, what they're able to do, but simply sometimes people like to uh, simply uh, hunt down very rare specimens as well. They don't have to be very spectacular, but simply if they're not very common, uh, then this can be quite uh, quite interesting um, uh, as well. Yeah? So um, I would say that uh, there are a couple of ciliates that are quite fascinating. I consider, for example, time-lapse videos of, of amoebas uh, quite nice. I've made a few of those as well. Yeah? Um, so generally, I consider um, yeah, many microorganisms fascinating. I think the whole uh, whole <laughs> field is is quite in, quite interesting. Simply because uh, you discover that it's uh, there's such a huge world out there which is invisible. Yeah. How can beginners get started with microscopy as a hobby? This is basically the next question over here. How can beginners get started uh, with a microscopy as a hobby? Well, uh, let me say the following. Um, <laughs> I'm almost inclined to say just get started. Uh, some people tend to overthink it a little bit, um, but generally what I would probably say is, is don't um, don't spend too much money in the beginning, uh, but buy yourself um, a decent microscope. Um, you have to be aware that most microscopes in the lower category are not extensible or upgradable to the extent that you might wish them to be upgradable, um, but that's okay. Um, so get started. Buy yourself also a box of uh, permanent slides, like the ones I've got over here. Okay, these are they're quite old already, from I think from the 1980s or so. Still, see if everything's typewritten here. Um, yeah, and uh, and or the more modern ones, yeah, you, which you can also buy over Amazon. Yeah. So there are uh, ready-made microscope slides, uh, and uh, well, what you do is, is you simply buy a box with them, and then you can observe them. Okay, um, there is a, a little bit of a, a difficulty that uh, those microscope slides have. For example, it says here the dog stomach. Okay, and then you put it under the microscope, but essentially um, it doesn't really tell you a lot. I'm, I'm just going to show you. Uh, let's go for microscope view here. Okay, so let's remove the ostracods again. Let's put the other thing, other one here in. Um, and, uh, yeah, I have to now, yeah, let's go down a little bit with the magnification. Let's try to find it. Yeah, see, it's not so easy to find. Okay. It's a little bit, the slide is also a little bit dirty. Um, yeah, here we go. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that is essentially, uh, the, the cross section, um, of, uh, the probably, um, yeah, of, of, the mucus layer of, um, the, uh, of, of, of the stomach, okay? Um, but you see, if you don't know a little bit about biology, it really doesn't tell you a lot. Yeah? So that's a little bit, I think, the difficulty that many begin beginners might have is, is that those lights um, yeah, essentially do appear to be a little bit abstract or quite abstract and therefore um, difficult to interpret. Yeah? So that's a little bit a, a thing that I would uh, recommend, therefore, also maybe that uh, if you buy some 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 beginners books as, as well um, that uh, kind of keep you motivated because otherwise you're going to look at the slide for a couple of a couple of times and then you feel demotivated because it's always the same right um, so to get started I would say buy yourself a microscope which is not too expensive and upgrade uh, as you gain more experience and don't look at the brand too much many people say is this a particular brand good or bad and I'm saying well actually it doesn't really depend on the brand so much because many microscopes uh, are rebranded using the same microscope is uh, sold on the different brand names so uh, essentially um, they're all the same anyway <laughs> yeah so um, the next question is a little bit the next question is a little bit um, uh, redundant because it asks you can you explain the importance of proper specimen uh, preparation techniques the importance of proper specimen uh, preparation techniques well um it's a little bit like the making of the slide here. 
Um, but I would say the following, maybe let me add something. If you want to make a microscope slide that uh, lasts very long, then you have to make sure that it is the specimen, it does not decompose. So and this uh, usually is done by drying the specimen or dehydrating the specimen properly. So I recommend that uh, that you do that as well. And what I've got uh, is I'm going to just show you in a second um, a, a very old specimen slide that I made back in 1998, which was not properly prepared. Yeah, this is uh, the slide um, of an insect, 1998. I used U-Kit uh, mounting medium, which is a resin-based mounting medium. And the insect uh, yeah, was not properly prepared. I simply dropped it into the mounting medium. So it was not dehydrated. It was still moist. And of course, uh, decomposition can happen. So I just want to show you a little bit uh, how uh, yeah how it looks like. So let's me let me quickly remove the other slide here and let's put the insect one in here. I don't know which insect it is. I have to tell you. Let's put the other slide back here, and uh, here it is. Okay, um, yeah, here is the head. You can see the antenna, of course, but it's not a very nice looking specimen, really. Yeah, and uh, yeah. You can see all of those dark areas that you see here. These are actually bubbles, uh, air bubbles. And uh, what could be is this could not just be air that's caught in there, but maybe it could be also gases formed by decomposition, so-called decomposition gases. And you can see over here, yeah, it got squeezed and something ran out of the insect. So a badly prepared specimen. Um, yeah, but it's uh, already quite old anyway, and uh, still good for showing you how probably not to do it. This was actually one of my first specimens that I prepared. Yeah. But still, yeah. Just wanted to 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 share this with you. Um, that um, the proper preparation technique includes dehydration in alcohol, um, and then uh, properly mounting it. But again, the specific technique depends quite highly on the type of specimen that you're preparing. Yeah. So, um, and if you want to prepare animal tissues, then it's it's becoming more complex uh, yet because you also have to use a microtome to kind of to cut it into thin sections, and it's an entirely different different story again. Yeah. So let's have a look here again into the desk view. Are there any do-it-yourself staining methods for enhancing microscopic observations? Yeah, there are. Um, of course, you can buy some stains. Uh, not all of them are quite healthy. Some of them are quite specific for staining only particular chemical substances. Um, but there is uh, a general purpose stain that I would recommend. It's called methylene blue. But, but if you have problems obtaining that, you can also use fountain pen ink. And I would like to show that uh, to you now. So I would like to prepare now a specimen using uh, regular ink. Okay, you might also want to try it out uh, because maybe there might be different types of ink around as well. And what you need is you need um, yeah here um, a little uh, a little petri dish, and I added a little bit of water already, just a couple of drops of water. And uh, what you need is you need a, a fountain pen cartridge, like I have over here. And what I'm going to do is now is I'm just going to to puncture it. Okay. And I'm going to puncture it here because uh, I will be using this um, also, yeah, as, uh, yeah, I'll put it also into one of my pens. So what I'll do um, is the following. I will now take something very sharp, okay? And I will now simply puncture a hole, hoping that I'm not going to make myself too blue. <laughs> okay, so now it's open. Let me quickly wipe it off with uh, some tissue paper. Okay, here we go so that the scissors remain kind of reasonably clean. And then, um, yeah, what you do is you approximately add the equal, an equal amount of ink. And I think it is still a little bit too much what I've got here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour a little bit out here on the tissue paper. Yeah. Or you can, of course, also use a pipette yeah, to do that. Um, but uh, that'll be fine. And uh, approximately the same amount of ink. I think that's around two drops. You mix it. And uh, the staining solution is finished. If you do not mix it with water, uh, then uh, the danger is there that everything is going to be too blue. So, um, yeah, let's uh, now try to prepare a specimen. Um, I'm going to dry wipe uh, the cover, not the cover glass, the slide again here. Okay. Number one, I'm going to also dry wipe uh, one of the cover glasses. Okay. Also. Uh, dry wipe. So, and now I'm going to collect uh, some of my cheek cells. And in order to do that, um, I need some um, of those cotton swabs, the Q-tips. Okay. And all you have to do is, is you have to kind of collect some cells, just like this. Uh, 
Okay, so it's almost like brushing your teeth. <laughs> and uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm <clears throat> carefully spreading the cells here on the slide, and you can actually see that there is some stuff on there. Um, and uh, this also breaks the cells apart a little bit, a little bit, and uh, um, otherwise they are going to be two large clusters. Okay. Uh, of course, I'm going to throw it away. Here's the trash can. I'm going to now um, apply a little bit of ink. So I'm going to use uh, my pipette here. Okay. Mix it a little bit maybe. And I uh, hope that I got the concentration correct. And a uh, cover glass goes on top. Okay. And we're ready to go. Okay, um, the cells will now absorb the stain. And as a matter of fact, if everything is correct, then the cells should appear darker than the surrounding. So I wonder if this actually worked out. So where is the microscopy view again? So let's take out the old insect. Let's put in the slide here. And, ah, uh, yeah. Uh, very slightly blue, not blue enough, so I diluted it a little bit too much. Okay, I diluted it a little bit too much, but maybe you can actually see here that the cells slowly start to become more and more blue as they absorb the ink. Yeah, so the round structures are air bubbles, but you get the idea. Yeah, so this is again a little bit where you have to experiment. Um, I think that um, the intensity is not very high, but uh, if you wait a little bit longer, then you can actually see the cells absorb more and more of the, the blue stain. So let's go up with the magnification further. Yeah. But I think it does become clear that, uh, yeah. Oh, there is a little bit of, what's this here? There seems to be a little bit of dirt here uh, somewhere. Okay. Um, that's, yeah. Um, where I wonder where it is. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, this could be, I don't know, I think uh, it could be on the, on the lamp somewhere um, or on the condenser. Yeah, so, so that's a little bit better. So what you are able to see as well is, is that the cheek cells are very flat um, and, and thin. Here I've got my arrow. And if you look into the cheek cells and you're able to see that the, each one of them has this round structure, that's the nucleus. And in many cases, the nucleus actually star, stains even darker than the rest of the cell. Okay. So, but uh, I think what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to yeah, uh, take it away. And uh, maybe for the next time, if we just look at here, I, I think I need a, a little bit uh, higher, more concentrated uh, stain with a little bit of more blue ink. I've just added a little bit uh, um, more ink uh, to um, yeah to the petri dish here. So let's uh, give it another try. And let's mix it a little bit. Small drop directly on the cells. Uh, cover glass goes on top. Now we're slowly starting to run out of cover glasses here as well. So let's have a look now. And uh, dry wipe it. And uh, here we go. Yeah, it does look a little bit more blue than the other one. So let's uh, give it a try and uh, um, hope for the best. So of course I have to change off back to the to the microscope view again here, um, and uh, go down a little bit with the brightness. Uh huh. I'm not able to see anything. Yeah. So here we go. Okay. Um, I found I found a couple of cells now again here the nucleus in the center and you can see that the nucleus the nuclei have stained a little bit darker than the rest of the cell okay so maybe a bit higher magnification yet uh, here we go still uh, i think in my view a little bit too light the color but uh, you get the idea okay let's uh, start to move on to the next uh, to the next uh, to the next question where is the next question here um yeah, what safety precautions should enthusiasts take when working with microscopes and specimens? 
Well, besides the obvious ones that you don't want to injure yourself, um, I mean, there are essentially two safety precautions that I recommend. Uh, number one is, of course, you do not want to work with uh, dangerous microorganisms. Uh, specifically, certain bacteria are a little bit problematic uh, if, if you don't uh, know what they are and if you grow them at high concentrations. Um, then this can basically be a source of infection if you hurt yourself. Okay, so this is something there that I would recommend that you do not uh, make so-called hay infusions, which are quite or were quite popular in the past, um, and uh, they generally grow bacteria to very high concentrations. Not something to be recommended with. And a second safety precaution that I have is is that uh, you do have to be a little bit careful with uh, some of the solvents that you work with. Okay, some of the Solvents that can be found in mounting media, for example, very often xylene is used, uh, which uh, is not so healthy. So you should always make sure that there is uh, enough ventilation and that all of those solvents are you know, kind of removed immediately from your room. Otherwise, especially if you're exposed over long term, you might not be the very best thing. So certain chemicals and certain microorganisms. At the same time, I also would not get uh, too paranoid um, about certain issues. Just wanted to show show you what I've got here um, in my under my stereo microscope. Okay, I'm going to switch this on. Yeah, I've got a, a moss sample. You have to yeah, zoom this a little bit. Yeah, and uh, of course, if you have those natural moss samples, there are there plenty of microorganisms um, in, in there. But I would not be too concerned about those because those microorganisms do not uh, grow generally, do not grow on, on, on humans. But I would be more careful, uh, for example, if you have a decomposing uh, meat, for example, or things like this, something that I would probably not uh, investigate because uh, those microorganisms could probably also grow on, on, on the human body. Huh? So this is something that I simply wants to, to, to make you a little bit aware of. Use, do use also to a certain extent a little bit your common sense. Some people are uh, that are, have written comments uh, and basically are already afraid of, of going swimming in a pond, in a clean pond, <laughs> yeah, because the, of the microorganisms there. Um, well, yeah, if the water is tested and if everything's fine, it shouldn't be a problem. Some people get paranoid about certain amoeba that, <laughs> so-called the brain-eating amoeba that has been in the media quite a long time. Uh, but I mean, these are very, very rare uh, cases. Um, and just because there is media coverage uh, doesn't mean that it's very likely that you're going to get these. But still, I do recommend uh, some basic um, hygienic precautions. Okay. So um, what else do I have here? Um, how do you choose the right microscope for different types of specimens and observations? It's, I think it's a very uh, general question here because there are so many different types of microscopes around. And I can just uh, talk a little bit uh, maybe about the, the in, in, in research, uh, what we uh, how the situation is going on in research. Uh, there essentially uh, the choice of microscope, of course, depends very highly on the research project that uh, you're, you're involved in. Yeah? So because you have a specific research question that you want to answer. And uh, based on that research question, you choose your microscopes. Yeah? Um, so generally, um, yeah, for hobbyists, this is not uh, you know, who have general purpose observations. I mean, this is not a criterion, really. Um, but uh, what I've just showed you is it's, uh, the stereo microscope. And these stereo microscopes um, yeah, are good for observing a large, fairly large, opaque um, objects. Okay. Like, yeah, this is one of my favorite specimens here. This is a fly. Yeah? Large, uh, fairly large, opaque objects. Um, and uh, they, these uh, do not require preparation. Okay. Um, and uh, if this is what you want to observe, then you need a stereo microscope. Um, and if you want to um, observe the much smaller, um, yeah, microorganisms, then of course you need a compound microscope. Yeah? So again, the requirements that hobbyists have is of course different than the ones that are using microscopes in research or forensics or, or whatever, right? Um, so essentially these are just the type of microscopes. And as I already mentioned before, uh, people want to know which brands to buy. Um, I would say here it depends really much more on the individual microscope than on the brand. Yeah? And the, I mean, I can just tell you what I've got here is, is the stereo microscope that I've got here uh, with where I'm looking at the flight. It's a Euromax stereo microscope. It's called the Euromax Nexus Zoom. Very nice microscope. And the other microscope, the compound one that I have is an Olympus microscope. Yeah. So just, uh, just saying in case you're interested. And it's kind of, kind of nice because you're able to see the compound eyes here of, of, of this fly. Yeah. Um, number nine, uh, 
Can you recommend uh, beginner-friendly books uh, or online resources uh, for learning more about microscopy? Yeah, I do have a few books. Actually, I have over 10 books, 10, 15 books. Impossible for me to show them to you, but I just have selected a few of them, just in case uh, you want to know. Uh, unfortunately, uh, some of the books are in German, and I found that there are many more books in German about microscopy than in the English language, which I think is kind of interesting. But I've got oop, heavy, 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 heavy. Several books here, okay, that I would like to show you. So always make sure that you remove all of the specimens, the stains, uh, otherwise, yeah, books might become a little bit uh, contaminated. And so let's uh, start off with an English uh, book here, a complete book of the microscope. I, I do not always want to show you the contents because of copyright reasons. Uh, but this book here is um, actually mostly um, about microscopic specimens, not so much about how to use the microscope. Yeah? So it contains also many, um, yeah, uh, many electron micrographs, uh, graphic images, visually very impressive, um, certainly a book uh, to read. Um, but it is not targeted so much for the hobby microscopist because simply there are uh, yeah, too few practical it's not a practical book it's just more about the things that you are able to see under the microscope again with uh, is also a strong focus on electron microscopy which is not accessible to many many hobbyists okay so that is uh, the, the 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 book uh, that uh, number one um yeah i want to show you two more books and there is so for this one actually there is even an english translation available uh, it's from the back from the 90s werner nachtigall he is uh, yeah the person who is in charge uh, who was <laughs> not in charge <laughs> who has written the book um, so if you google him okay, for him then you actually might be able to find uh, also the english translation a very good book um, for hobby microscopists uh, talks about specimen preparation different types of microscopes things that you can observe very colorful okay um, yeah it is from the 90s uh, but still microscopy does not become outdated uh, so quickly so a very useful resource as well so if you want to go a little bit more technical or if you want to go more advanced rather, the, the, yeah, the big book about microscopy here, this here is a huge one. Um, and this one is uh, interesting because it does link uh, um, specimen preparation also with a lot of theory about biology. So it, it, it's actually a, a fairly um, comprehensive book. Yeah, um, print is, is kind of small even. Yeah, lots of information and uh, um, yeah, yeah. Highly recommended as well, but of course it's in German. I don't know if an English translation is already available or not. Yeah, uh, but it gives you also a lot of biological background. Yeah, that's that's called plant, plant cross section here. And then um, two books that I or one book that I can recommend, even if it is in German, and if you, even if you do not speak German, I recommend it. I've got an old and a new edition here. So this here is the old edition. It's Life in the Droplets of Water, and this is the new edition here. It's a little bit larger and thicker. And this is an identification book. So it contains a thousand, so yeah, what, 1,500 drawings. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you are able to simply, when you see something under the microscope, you can try to find the drawing and then you know what it's called. Um, so it's one page is always a description of the specimens and the other page has the drawings. There's of course also some, some general theory, um, yeah, in, in here, yeah, um, um, as well. And, uh, if you want to look at the first pages, then I think in, on, on Amazon, there are even also some, um, available, some, uh, a preview is available as well. Okay. But not of the main part where it's actually about the identification. Yeah? And if you, uh, once you've got the name, then you can always Google it and you can op obtain more information as well. Highly recommend it. Uh, and again, if you don't speak German, you still, uh, it's still useful because it's mostly based on drawings. Okay. And, uh, yeah, therefore for, um, identification of water microorganisms. I think it's it's a mandatory book, and this here is the the old the old uh, in edition. Okay, so let's uh, let's do move on a little bit now. Um, again, um, can you recommend any beginner? Friend? Oh, I talked about that. What's the most uh, memorable discovery you've made uh, through your hobby microscopy? <laughs> this is. Uh, uh, yes, I do have a memorable, um, <laughs> discovery and that it has nothing to do with uh, the observations, uh, that I've made. But, uh, for months, I basically was surprised why my image quality and the colors of a microscope were not quite as good as uh, I hoped them to be. And it was an adjustment problem. So I was using the microscope maybe already a year or something like that. And then I discovered that I had to readjust something, uh, to improve the image quality and I completely overlooked that. Why 
why did I overlook that? Because I did not read the instruction manual. I thought I knew it better. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I had uh, yeah, many more colors um, and, and things like this. It was simply not adjusted properly. Yeah? And uh, for me, this was actually the most memorable discovery that uh, yeah, sometimes it is worth uh, to read the instruction manual um, uh, as well. And uh, concerning the things that I observed under the microscope, um, I would not say that there's one memorable discovery, but uh, of course you're setting yourself certain targets. I remember a long time ago, the first time when I've seen uh, tardigrades under the microscope or certain uh, worms uh, and so on. Uh, these are quite nice experiences. And um, one of the things that I um, was a little bit surprised of is, is that uh, um, simply putting onion cells under the microscope, sometimes uh, they can be extremely interesting as well because I could see actually under time lapse the movement of vesicles of the vesicles. Vesicles are little cell organelles that are important for transporting substances inside a cell. And uh, you could actually see that, uh, that that happening. So all all of those processes of life, uh, if you're able to see them, I think it was quite uh, memorable. And even though I've been in bi into biology for quite a long time, um, yeah, it still always keeps on impressing me of, of what's uh, um, yeah what you're able to discover here. Yeah, yeah. Last but not least, I do also want to show you uh, a few other things here. Um, yeah, maybe if you've already watched the previous live streams, uh, you've seen them already. These are slides that have concave indentations and I used some uh, nail polish, some blue nail polish to glue cover glasses on them. Yeah, so this is basically a sand sample and you can see it moves around and therefore it's uh, quite uh, yeah, able to portray the sand in a very natural uh, way without any mounting medium. I just want to show this to you here as well when I switch over to the stereo microscope. Okay, uh, yeah, I have to remove the the moss and uh, put the sand in here. Okay, let's zoom out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. center everything. Yeah. And uh, yeah, this is basically how how sand looks like yeah. um, under the microscope. Yeah, um, there is a second way how you can make a sand slide, and that is uh, by simply putting the sand on some glue on a microscope slide. Yeah, and this is how it looks like over here. Yeah. And okay, it's a different type of sand, therefore it's not quite as contrasty, but you can also see the glue a little bit um, as well. Yeah. So I simply also want to show you a little bit uh, how to prepare those microscope slides because this was actually one of the questions as well. How do you prepare um, yeah, some, some suggestions here and here, here they are. Yeah. So over here, I put some of the PVA Elmos glue um, on the slide, I spread it apart and put the sand directly on here. And now I've got a permanent mount of, 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 of a sand slide. But maybe this here is a little bit better because I can actually move it around and uh, this uh, portrays the sand in a more natural way. Yeah? So, but people, you know what? Uh, I think uh, I am going to slowly call it uh, quits uh, for today. I know the live stream was a little bit shorter. Uh, than usual um, and I hope that you were able to comment uh, on on this yeah as I said it's not a, it, it's a pre-recorded stream not a live stream uh, but you are hopefully were able to interact uh, live uh, in the chat to also leave your comments behind uh, I'm always uh, open and thankful for suggestions uh, for things that uh, you um, would be interested in um, yeah I call it quits for today wish you all the best happy microbe hunting as always and see you around next time bye bye